Hey everyone, so in today's lesson, I'm gonna be teaching you how to create tabs in your digital planner. And here's a little preview of what that looks like. After I recorded and edited the video, I realized I forgot to say something very important. In this video, I briefly use Adobe Illustrator to create PNG images out of my text. And I don't really go into a lot of detail on Illustrator in this video, but I do plan on doing that in a future video. But I just wanted to let you know that if you don't currently have Adobe Illustrator, you can also create PNG images out of your own fonts in an app called Over on your iPad. If you don't have an iPad, you can also use a website called PicMonkey. You can use Canva. I believe you have to use Canva for business in order to use custom fonts. Or if you have Photoshop, you can do it in Photoshop as well. And I will link to all of these apps and all of this software in the video description. Now let's get started with the video. Hey everyone, it's Katherine. So I'm back with another tutorial in this series and today I'm gonna teach you how to create tabs for your digital planner. So this is one of the longer steps and this video isn't gonna show you how to link those tabs. That's what I'm gonna cover in the next video. This is just gonna show you how to create those tabs. So this is everything that we've done so far. Here's the planner cover, and this is the first page that we created when we were creating those spiral rings. So the planner that I'm actually gonna make throughout this course, I'm actually not gonna include spiral rings in it, so there's as much writing space as possible. So this is our second slide, and I'm just gonna delete everything that's on here to continue this. So let me select everything. These pages are locked. And I'm just going to select everything and then delete and start from scratch. So what I personally like to do, rather than having a desk background like we talked about in the last video, I like to just fill the background with the artwork that's on my cover. And to me, that looks like, you know, you have your notebook open or your planner open and you just see that background. So to do that... Just like we did with the wood background in the previous video, I'm gonna go over here under format and I'm gonna go to image fill and I'm gonna select my artwork. Okay, so I've got it on stretch. I'm gonna go to scale to fill and that's pretty much the same. So now that's just my cover as the entire background and I'm gonna make the page size pretty big. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to my shapes and I want my pages to have hard edges rather than rounded edges. So I'm gonna select the square and I'm just gonna bring it to the corner and drag it. So, you know, I'm wanting to leave some room for my tabs to be over here and I'm also going to leave room up here for just a little tab that will take you back to the cover if you want to go back to the cover. So this isn't a required step but I am going to change this color to white because I feel like that blue is just so distracting. Actually I might change it to gray. I'm going to change it to gray. So for this planner um, instead of making pink tabs usually all of my planners have a lot of pink. This cover has a lot of pink. I'm just going to do black and white tabs because I think that'll show up really well against this pink. And then I'm going to have pink lettering. So I'm going to create my first tab. And first and foremost, I'm just going to temporarily lock this slide right here so it doesn't get in my way. And now I'm going to go back to my shapes and I'm going to select a rounded rectangle because that looks more like a tab. And I want to kind of play around. Let me see. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to unlock this slide and I'm going to select both the page and the tab and I'm going to slide this over a little bit so I can have just as large of a page as possible. Okay, so now I'm again briefly just going to lock the page. And I need 12 of these, one for each month, and I want them to alternate black and white. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to get the dimensions of the page and do a little bit of math. <laughs> so um, I unlocked that page too soon. So I'm just going to unlock it really quick. 
and I can see that the height is 725 points. So I need to divide 725 by 12 to see how tall I can make my tab. So 725 divided by 12, I'm just doing this on my phone, is 60.416. So it doesn't let you do decimals in Keynote. Um, so I'm actually just going to round it all the way down to 60. So I have my tab shape selected. I'm going to now lock this for good for a while. And I'm going to change the height. I'm not going to change the width at all. I'm just going to change the height to 60. And so that's going to be the size of my tabs. And I'm going to go ahead and change this color to white. And then I'm going to copy and paste and change the second one to black. Oh, hold on. There we go. So I want them to be right next to each other. And I'm going to select both of these and then copy and paste them and then place them. So now I've got six months here. So now I'm going to copy and paste all of that and then I'll have all of my months. Since I had to round down a little bit, the way that I can get them to the exact size, first I'm going to make sure they're distributed evenly. So once I have all of these selected, I'm going to come over here to arrange and I'm going to distribute vertically. And so now they're evenly spaced and I want to make sure that they're aligned in the center. And they are. So now they're all selected. So briefly, I'm just going to group these. So now it's one image and I'm just going to drag down. And that will make the tabs as big as they can. There is kind of a downside to that because once you group them, it makes you constrain proportions. So when you drag down, it also makes them a little bit wider. But if you have enough space over here, that's not really that big of a deal. So now that they're all dragged down, so they take up the entire page, all dragged down. I don't even think that's a sentence. But now that they take up, you know, the whole page that's in the planner, I'm going to ungroup and I want to move these back. So I'm going to unlock this page again and I'm going to select everything on my page. I'm going to move it over to center it. And now I only want the tabs to be moved back. So I'm going to select all of my tabs. I'm going to go to arrange and I'm going to hit backward. And now you see they're behind the page. And it looks like I do need to resize these a little bit more um, so they're not sticking up. So again, I'm going to group my tabs and drag down just a little bit. And there we go. So now I can ungroup them again. So this is where things get complicated. And this is where you have a few different options. If you want to just type the labels for your tabs, you can definitely do that and you can make those fit on your tabs. I feel like that's a little bit harder. What I personally like to do, I like to type my tabs in Illustrator, save them as a PNG, and then bring them into Keynote. So the reason I like to do this it's for a few different reasons. I purchase a lot of fonts that I can use commercially. I really don't even purchase a font if I can't use it commercially. And a lot of these fonts are so awesome and have ligatures. Um, and a ligature is where, I think I'm using the right terminology, is where when you're typing, they might have like an alternate set of letters that you can use for certain letter combinations. And it makes it look more handwritten. And I just love that. Illustrator supports all of that type of stuff, whereas Keynote doesn't as far as I know. So you make sure you get the most handwritten feel when you use Illustrator. So I'm going to pull up Illustrator and I've already got a canvas pulled up and I'm going to select a font to use. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to use a font called November and I actually don't believe this one has ligatures, but I still prefer to do things this way and I'll tell you why. So I'm going to just type Jan for January, and I'm just going to do it at font size 72. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color to the shade that I want it to be because that's just easier to do here. So to do that, I'm going to select what I just typed, 
and I know the hex code for the color that I want to use. Canva has like a color palette generator and it's really awesome. You just upload a photo and it pulls colors from it and it gives you the hex code. So I'll link to that in the video description. And I use that and I use the artwork and I got all of these hex codes from it. So I really like this fourth hot pink and the hex code is FB6299. So I'm going to use that for my font color and it's FB6299. And so now it's pink. And so to save this as a PNG image from Illustrator, I'm going to go to File, Export, Export As, and then PNG. I'm going to make sure PNG is selected down here. For me, it automatically was. And I'm going to save these under this folder right here. And so this is January, and I'm just going to save it as one. So I just like to put my months in order. I'm going to save it as a PNG. And this saves it with a transparent background. You can see it right here. And I like to save everything at 300 PPI. So 300 DPI is also the same thing. So the reason that I do that, some people, you know, don't save it quite as high of a quality so they can reduce file size. But I just feel like 300 is flawless. Um, you can zoom in so close and it never gets pixelated. So that's why I like to do it because there's actually a trick that I'm going to show you in a future video on how to reduce your file size of your digital planner without losing the quality. So I just do everything at high quality. So I'm going to save this and I'm just going to type all of the months and save them just like that. Okay, so I've got all of those saved and now I'm going to go back to my keynote document. So, like I was saying, the reason that I like to do all of that in Illustrator and bring them in that way is because it's so much easier to get them sized correctly for your tabs since the PNG images is strictly the size of the image. When you do things here, um, when you type things in, I just have a harder time getting it sized correctly because like you can see when I go to the text, when I try to drag the box, um, it does not change the text size at all. You have to actually adjust it by point size. And it's just hard to know which point size it needs to be in order to fit the tab correctly. So that's why I do it in Illustrator, save it as PNGs because I can size things so much easier. So let me start bringing those in and I'll show you how I figure out the sizing and how I get these placed. So to bring in the first month, I'm going to bring in January, I'm going to go to file, and I'm going to go to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to insert, and I'm going to go to choose, and I'm going to go to my folder that I have these saved under, and here's January. So it brings it in pretty big, um, and you can see the size over here by a range, you can see where the sizing is. So I need to get the size of the tab and I actually need to get the height of the tab for this to work. So I'm going to click on one of these tabs and the height is 61. So I usually start off every now and then I have to readjust later, but I usually start off by making the width of my sticker. I'm calling it a sticker, but you know, of this text right here, I make it about five points less than the height of the tab. I need to make the width of my January 56, so it's about five points less, like I was saying. And I also want to make sure this constrained proportions is selected because that keeps the text proportional so it doesn't warp the text at all. So I'm just going to go to width and I'm going to type in 56 and see how it keeps this proportional. So that actually looks like it's going to be a little too tall and it's not going to fit properly right there. So I am going to adjust the height a little bit. I think, let me flip this and then I can go from there to figure out the height. There's just kind of, you ha kind of have to play around until you get it right. So now I need to rotate this so it's sideways so it fits on the tab. So for the angle, I'm going to type in 90. And that did it the wrong way. So I'm going to just put a negative in front of that 90 and it's going to recalculate it. So it's 270 that I need to rotate. And I need to lock that page. That's what happens when you don't lock the page. You accidentally move it. Okay. 
So now I can just select this January and see that actually fits pretty well. Um, I actually like how that looks. If you wanted to make it smaller, you could easily do that. You would just uncheck this constrained proportions and you could type in like 65 right here and see that would make it a little smaller, but you'd still have a good width. But I actually like the large size of it. So I'm going to undo that and keep that there. And yeah, that looks good to me. And let's see, I accidentally selected the tab. That's the trouble, like I was saying, when you don't lock things. You accidentally move things you don't want to move. So see that yellow line? That is showing me that it is aligned with the tab. So I'm just going to do this for January through December. Okay, so a little update. This height works for January, but it didn't work for February. This is what I was saying where you kind of have to play around and readjust as you go. So I'm going to, just to be safe, make all of my text have a height of 65 because we know that works. So now January is just a little shorter and I can still align it with this tab. And then February, I'm going to uncheck constrained proportions and type in 65. And now we know that this will be able to fit right here. And that's perfect. So I'm just going to continue on. Okay, so I've got all of my tabs now inserted and aligned, and that's all I need to do for my side tabs. Now, for my top tab, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do a tab that leads to the front and then a tab that leads to the back. So, I'm just going to copy a white tab and a black tab. And... Bring this here and I can obviously delete the January. Oh, I deleted the wrong part. I can delete the lettering, the January and the February. And let's see, I'm going to rotate both of these and I'm going to place these over here. So since I just resized that one so much, um, instead of using that um, black tab that I used earlier, I'm going to copy and paste it so they're the exact same size, and then I'm just going to change the second one to black. Now that those are there, I'm going to go back to Illustrator, and I'm going to do just like I did with the months, and I'm going to create something that says front and something that says back. Okay, so now that I'm back on the page, uh, and I've got that typed. I need to unlock this page and move these tabs back so I can see how the lettering is going to look. So I'm just going to unlock my page and then I'm going to select only these two tabs and I'm going to go to your range and hit backward. And now it's behind my gray page and those tabs are pretty small but I kind of like how that looks. So now I'm going to lock this page again and again this time, since these are on the top and not on the side, I need to check the width rather than the height to see how I need to make my letters. So the width for these is 61. So again, I need to make my letters with a width of about 56 and then we'll figure the height out as we go. So I'm gonna insert the lettering. I'm gonna do front first. And change that to 56 and I don't have to rotate these because again these are on the top for any tabs on the top or bottom you won't have to rotate the lettering for the tabs and I'm going to bring that and that is pretty tall compared to the tab so right now it's at 46 I'm going to uncheck constrained proportions and I'm going to see what 36 looks like I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller. Let's go down to 32. Yeah, that looks good. And that's centered with the tab. So now I'm gonna do the same thing for the back tab. And since I already know the exact dimensions that I need, 
I'm just going to uncheck constrain and I'm going to insert both right here. And there you go. Now it's got all of the tabs that it needs. And the last thing I would do, um, I'm going to, I'm not going to make an index page for this planner. When I go over the links, I will show you how to get your index page set up in case you want an index page. But I'm going to change this page to white because I like for my pages to be white. So I'm just going to unlock it, go to style, go to color fill and change it to white. And so now you can see, I love the look of this because it blends with the white tabs. I just really like how that looks. So that's how you would add your tabs. Again, just like with your cover, just like with anything else, if you wanted to give the tabs a more 3D look or the page a more 3D look, you would select all of the tabs and the page if you want to give everything a shadow, um, which I'm going to do. And I'm just going to drag my mouse and select everything and click on drop shadow. And now everything, even the lettering, has a 3D look. You can see the lettering effect more so on the white tabs. You can't really see it on the black tabs. And I actually think I'm going to go and delete the shadow from the lettering. Um, even though that looks really cool, it's just that you can't see it on the black tabs. So it just defeats the whole purpose of having it on the lettering. But you can see that the tabs have shadows and this page just has a slight shadow. So it gives it more of a 3D look. So I'm going to delete those shadows and then on our next lesson, I will talk about how you link all of these tabs. So if you have any questions at all about this, feel free to contact me on Facebook, Etsy, Instagram, anywhere if you have any questions. And make sure you subscribe if you want to keep following along with this class so you can learn how to make your very own digital planner. And also check out my website, naptimealt.com, so you can download tons of planner-related freebies now.